Hello friends, welcome to God's Eagle Ministries. My name is Ambassador Orojo Mande Ogbe. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word and God himself is transforming lives through his timeless truth, one content at a time. We are one in Christ Jesus, let's stay one. Evangelism, discipleship, counseling, healing, deliverance, restoration, and prayer without walls, borders, and denomination. Uh, today is Thursday, the 13th of April, 2023. And the Otakada content time for you, content count for you today is 2,221,118. Um, and the title today is Action Plan, Nigerian Election 2023. Two steps and three northern compass. Focus on Asia, Africa, and the combined Western world led by America. Prayer and fasting for the persecuted churches, day 28 of 40. And uh, the uh, keywords here is persecution, hashtag persecution, uh, Christian persecution, uh, prayer, fasting, prayer for persecuted church, 40 day fast, China, Chinese church, churches, Saudi Arabia, Western world, African churches, European churches, Israeli churches, persecuted, uh, persecution, uh, Israel, true stories, persecuted churches, persecuted Christians, uh, LGBTQ+, plus Africa, Western World, Nigerian Election, INEC 2023, Election 2023, Action Plan, Presidential Election 2023, Throne Room, Righteousness, Justice, Strategic Spiritual Warfare, Spiritual Warfare, Perfect Will, Permissive Will, Spiritual Paradigm. And so uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for such a time as this thank you for the gift of access for the privilege to call upon your name take all the praise <clears throat> and honor in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you for the shared blood that brought us this unfettered access to you anytime any place anywhere to you be all the praise and honor in jesus name and so lord this uh today the 28th of 40 fasting and praying for the church and leadership church you and i and leadership um, we ask Spirit of the Living God that you bread life upon this content I had behind the cross. I ask that you speak through me. I yield my voice, my emotions, and everything about me. And I ask that at the end of it all, you take the glory, Lord God, and we take the blessing to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of the Living God, I ask that you ride upon the wings of the Spirit to the four wings of the earth and send these messages into the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit and bone and marrow of as many that are hearing these or listening to these or reading these uh, the social platforms. I ask Spirit of the Living God that you kickstart them to be all that you call them to be and to do to the glory of your name and our blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, again, this is the 28th or 40 prayer and fasting for church, you and I, and leadership. And I repeat that, church, you and I. The church is not the building. The church is you and I. Okay? And, um, and leadership prayer for the persecuted churches in China, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Africa, and the Western world. And today we bring you true stories. Why are Christians the most persecuted of all religions of the world? Persecuted churches focus on Asia, Africa, and the combined Western world led by America. Prayer and fasting for the persecuted churches. Day 28 or 40 plus action plan. Nigerian election 2023. Two steps and three northern compass. Stay tuned as we go ahead. So last post title on the 9th of April 2023, Sunday. We brought you true stories. Why are Christians the most persecuted of all religions of the world? Focus on Saudi Arabia and Israel. And prayer and fasting for persecuted churches, day 24 or 40. That was, that was then. And the link is there uh, on our website on this post for you to avail yourself of that content. To give you content that as you pray and intercede for the church and leadership, you have something to pray with. And so, friends, welcome to the last day on interceding for the persecuted churches with particular focus on Africa, uh, Asia, and the combined Western world. This post we give content for your prayers. From tomorrow, we will be praying for the organized church structure and those who manage that structure for one week, both leaders and followers. 
You don't need to be a prophet to tell that the organized church structure is causing division in the body of Christ and all manner of evil that should not even be mentioned amongst the brethren. So begin to intercede for the church organization that you see. Turn your frustration into force of prayer as you will call the owner of the church uh, to take his place in our organized structures in Jesus' name. Amen. God can use a donkey. If God can use a donkey, God can use you. Now, before we begin the exposure on persecuted churches in Asia, Africa, and Western world led by America, I would like to start today's post commenting on the presidential election 2023 uh, in Nigeria, the necessary action plan that will provide a higher leverage in determining outcome come 29th of May, which happens to be my birthday, interestingly. So we bring you today action plan, Nigeria election 2023, two steps and three Norton compass. What are these? As Christians in a falling and failing world where we are called to be the light and the salt, Jesus has shown us by living, breathing example that to effect outcomes, we must do two things. Number one, we must pray as if all depends on God. For what is impossible with God is possible with, uh, with men. Sorry, what is impossible with men is possible with God. And that came uh, by Jesus himself from Luke chapter 18 verse 27. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. In referencing that scripture in expounded format, I dare say that it is a miracle of grace when those who have wealth do not put their trust in it. Man cannot, but God can break the spell that reaches, reaches exercise over the wealthy. And secondly, we learn from Jesus. Those are the two things that we're learning from Jesus. Secondly, we learn from Jesus that we must take action as if all depends on us. For faith without works is dead faith indeed. Jesus didn't just ask for the Father's will concerning going to the cross or absconding. absconding. He prayed for the will of the Father and he obeyed by going to the cross. The Lord strengthening him through his angels. The angel would have taken down all the attackers in one blow, but it would be against God's perfect will for Jesus at that point in time. Attacking the attackers will be in the realm of permissive will and God will not be honored. And the salvation that we enjoy today will not have happened. We just celebrated the Easter as a consequence of that action more than 2,000 years ago. With God, there's always, with God, there's always a going down before a rising up. I repeat that again for emphasis. With God, there's always a going down before a rising up. That has always been God's pattern. We can't break that order. I repeat, we can't break that order. Abraham experienced it, living comfort in Mesopotamia, and going to unknown land without even a piece of land to bury his own dead. Jacob, so that he can deliver the whole human race, because God said he was going to send him to be a blessing to the whole human race. And that journey began from leaving a place of home, a place of comfort, and going into a place where... Um, he didn't know and where he didn't have a place. He kept moving from tent to tent. From somebody who has a place to say now, he's moving from tent to tent. Now, and um, Jacob, we take example from Jacob. Again, Jacob becoming Israel. Um, you know the pattern he went through, how he served in a foreign place and had to run. And then in this encounter with the angel before they changed his name to Israel. And that changed the trajectory of Jacob's life called Israel. Today we have Israel. As a consequence of that encounter, he had to go down to rise up and become a prince to God. Joseph, a slave boy in a foreign land, become, big foreign land becoming a prime minister in a foreign land to deliver humankind. And Moses, on exile in a foreign land as a shepherd, becoming the priest and king of Israel. Jesus coming down as, as many uh, dying a gruesome death and rising to deliver mankind. A going down before a coming up. If God has called you a deliverer, and why does he do that? We are all deliverers. He's called us to be uh, to be a deliverer, a, a speaker for him, and in, uh, an ambassador for him. So if God has called us, you and I, to be deliverer, we must go down first to where those who have been delivered are resident. And experiencing before 
experiencing what they're going through, uh, they, 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 what they're going through before we can be qualified, uh, qualified to deliver them. You see, there's always a going down before a rise. And the wisdom there is that we have to sit where people are hurting, to be in a position to cry out for intervention for those group of people that God is sending us unto. And um, it says that Jesus lent obedience by the things he suffered. He said that he has gone through everything we, we've gone through so that he will be a better intercessor for us. That for us, that is an order that cannot be broken. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, read and digest this scripture in James chapter 2, 17 to 26, where it talks about, but let's, let's just read that. Amplified Bible Classic Edition says, So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds and, deeds and action of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power, inoperative, dead. And verse 26, that's John 2, 17 and 26. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay, so this is the second step, step that we must recognize uh, out of these two points I mentioned above, where the biggest leverage is. What is where is the biggest leverage in uh, handing over things to God and taking action. Where's the biggest leverage? The biggest leverage is in the realm of strategic spiritual warfare. The realm of strategic spiritual warfare. For what? To enforce God's plans, God's purposes, God's desire here on earth. We must get into the throne room with a blank sheet of paper, allowing God to set uh, the direction and tone of our prayers, starting with not our will, but his be done. Below are the three of our not encompassed consideration to be factored in in the throne room prayers highlighted below. So I'm giving you the three. I've taken you the two steps. The two steps is uh, with man. This is uh, with man. This is impossible. With God, all things are possible. That's the first step towards prayer. And secondly, so and then secondly, that we can't do this on faith alone. We must take action. All right, so let's look at the three not encompassed considerations to be factored in in the throne room as we go into the throne room to pray. This is preparatory to the prayer. The prayer will come subsequently. The number one, first not encompassed, not our will, but is be done. Now take that from Luke 22, 41 to 43, Amplified Bible, Classic Edition. And he withdrew from them about his stone throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing Remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but always yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him in spirit. If God says a donkey will be your leader, that is what it will be. A donkey is it. If God says a donkey and we are forcing in, say, a monkey, then that's, that's, that is against God's plan. We must then enforce in the place of prayer the donkey. If we don't, a monkey stays with all the ramification that comes in living outside God's plan, perfect will and plans for us. And to get emphasis there, you go read Psalms 82. I beg you, by the mercies of God, read Psalms 82 to understand how important it is. As God's representative, Jesus referenced that scripture when God, when they were asking me, was calling himself God. He said, isn't it written in your law, Psalms 82? You are God, referencing that scripture. So I beg you, by the mercies of God, read Psalms 82, to understand how important it is as God's representative, to act as God's, uh, God's uh, representatives here on earth, to enforce righteousness and justice on the earth realm. His perfect plan and perfect will. We are told that righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. To gain clarity on the importance of righteousness and justice being foundation of God's throne, also I get you to read Psalms 89 verse 14 to 16. Remember that God will permit permissive will because after man blamed him for giving him a wife that made the man sin, a man decided to be his own God. God said in Genesis 6, 1, 3, let's get some emphasis there. Amplifier Bible Classic Edition. When men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, 
The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took wise of all they desired and chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not forever dwell and strive with man, for he also is flesh, but his days shall yet be one hundred and twenty years. From that day became what you want is what you get, but you will have no control over the outcome of getting what you want. Now, that's why God will allow you to have go wrong with your permissive will. Second northern compass. The first northern compass we have given is that uh, not my will, but yours be done. The second northern compass that we need to consider as we're going to be praying uh, is we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. <laughs> it's not up against tunable or, uh, or the obedient uh, obi. Take your stand. Wash and pray. Pray and watch. That is the second compass. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, so you need to take your stand, watch and pray, pray and watch. Now, read this so that you can have a brain reset and view things from the spiritual paradigm. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, Amplified Bible Classic Edition. In conclusion, we, we be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with Him, draw your strength from Him. That strength which is boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world's rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in heavenly spiritual, spirit, uh, supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place, stand firmly in your place, stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with God. Talk about righteousness and justice again. And having showed your feet in the preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wills which is the word of god pray at all times on every occasion in every season in spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty to that end keep alert and watch with strong of purpose and perseverance interceding in behalf of the saints God's consecrated uh, people what's our third so that's the, the second compass the third northern compass is this this kind go ahead not except by prayer and fasting I don't understand how people will get up to this day and keep talking Africans pray a lot that's all that they know they just keep praying that is the power of the Christian power is in the place of prayer nothing more nothing less then so the third northern compass is this this kind goeth not to serve by prayer and fasting let's read matthew 17 16 to 21 by jesus himself and i brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him then jesus answered and said "O faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was killed from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, This mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall, re shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So, how do you then launch a strategic spiritual warfare in bolts and knots? Now, prayer for Nigeria and the presidential election fallout. This is how we have been praying. I encourage you to do this every day until the die is cast. Meaning, the event has happened or a decision has been taken that cannot be changed. That is, come 29th of May, my birthday. Now, Father, what an awesome privilege. And this is a prayer 
me. You can re-echo this and, and expand this and put in your own word. Whatever it is, pray from your heart, not from your head. Father, what an awesome privilege you, Lord, has given unto us, the sons of men, as your ambassador, chosen through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. That event that has given us authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, to adjudicate on your behalf, on, on, you, on your behalf, so that righteousness and justice prevails where you have planted us as light and salt of the earth. Now, Father, we bring before you your throne of mercy, Nigerians as a people, made in your image and likeness for such a time as this. Take all the praise, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, presidential election has taken place, and there are grief parties resulting in court case and tribunal ongoing as we call upon your name right now. Father, come in your mercy. Have mercy upon us as a people. We have not lived totally according to the precepts you have set for us. Lord, have mercy. We have sinned. We repent of our wrongdoing in, in, in misrepresenting you, Lord God. We return today asking that you accept us back, not on account of our righteousness, but on account of the finished work of your Son, Jesus Christ. Upon that cross at Calvary, we receive total cleansing through that sacrificial blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Lord, have your free rule and reign in this glorious land. The people you have set apart for world evangelism in this time and season. As your mouthpiece, your hand, your legs, your heart, we now decree and declare with our whole heart, our soul and mind, our total being as follows. We decree and declare concerning the presidency. No one is permitted to sit on the throne of Nigerian presidency except the one you, Lord, have selected who will further your righteous cause in the Senate, the House of Representatives, Judiciary, the parastatals, the state governments, House of Assemblies, local government secretaries, chairmen, those who are in any category of leadership in business and schools establishments, in our homes, families, and here around Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, we dethrone wickedness and unrighteousness as we bind the wicked spirit that energizes them by authority, by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We lose angels of war and guardian angels over our land in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, we proclaim that this nation called Nigeria and the people called Nigerians becomes a praise in the lands all around the world as we silence the accusers of the brethren in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for we know that we know that you have heard and heeded our prayers this day as you do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even think or imagine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is a prayer and I encourage you to keep taking this prayer. If you don't have the words, just read through it, but let it come from your heart. Don't read it as if you're reading a novel. Pray with intensity. This is effective, effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. And the power and purpose of God will prevail. We don't care who is there, but let it be the person that God has ordained for such a time as this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we look at our today's title, True Stories. Why are Christians the most persecuted of all religions of the world? Focus on Asia, Africa, and the combined Western world led by America. Pray and fasting for persecuted churches, day 28 of 40. Let's look at Asia and Africa. Open Doors has now released the 2023 World Watch list of Christian persecution. Every day, they say from that report, 13 Christians worldwide are killed because of their faith. Every day, 12 churches of Christian building are attacked. And every day, 12 Christians are unjustly arrested or imprisoned, and another five are abducted. These are estimates. There are more. Not every one of them make into the database. So, reports the 2021 World Watch List, the latest annual accounting from open doors of the top 50 countries where Christians are the most persecuted for following Jesus Christ. You might th think the list is all about oppression, but the list is really all about resilience, stated David Corey, President and CEO of Open Doors USA, introducing the report released uh, uh, then. The numbers of God's people who are suffering should mean the church is dying, that Christians are keeping quiet, losing their faith, and turning away from one another. 
he stated, but that's not what's happening. Instead, in living color, we see in the words of God recorded in the prophet Isaiah, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 19. And we know that uh, scripture that says the church is marching on and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's Jesus speaking. That's Jesus. And you can bank on it. The listed nations contain 309 million Christians living in places with very high or extreme levels of persecution, up from 260 million in in, in last years. And uh, there's a video there that will help you uh, go to that. The precise number of Christians who are killed because of their faith remains unclear. Reports showing a fall in number of deaths during the period June 2015 to June 2017 to below 100,000 still show the level of violence aimed at Christians remains severe. The most recent mass killing of Christians happened in Sri Lanka when an Easter morning 2019 some 150 christians died in strikes by suicide bombers at three churches acn research is showing that christian persecution is mostly sharply on the rise in south and east asia in countries like Myanmar, uh, india pakistan china and north korea that region is now the hot spot for persecution taking over that dubious honor from the middle east Across Africa, jihadist violence against Christians remains at critical level. For example, ISIS affiliated, affiliated Boko Haram has perpetrated genocidal attacks targeting Christians in northern Nigeria. In the last few years, the group has suffered significant military defeat and the loss of territory they held, but remains a danger to Christians. The focus is now on the attacks by Muslim Fulani headsmen on Christian farmers in Nigeria's middle, middle belt, with many observers pointing at the headsmen's sophisticated weaponry as a sign the attackers have financial backing. Some speak of an effort to Islamize the country. In Nigeria, nearly 3,500 Christians were killed because of their faith in 2020. Increasingly, the whole of sub-Saharan Africa has been targeted by Islamist extremists. Some groups financed by Gulf states with Christians most often singled out for wanton killings. The Central Sahel has suffered the greatest increase in militant Islamic group activity of any region in Africa. For extremist attacks in Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger increased from 180 incidents in 2017 to approximately 800 violent events in the first 10 months of 2019. Now, Christians held in captivity because of their faith. According to research by Aid, the Church in Need, unjust detention of Christians, most often under deplorable and cruel condition, is emerging as one of the most prevalent, enduring, and serious forms of Christian persecution. Research shows every month in the 50 countries where it is most dangerous to be a Christian, countries like Pakistan and China, an average of 309 Christians are unjustly imprisoned from Asia and the Middle East to Africa and parts of South America. Thousands of Christians are unjustly detained for their faith. Many suffer in complete silence, while women suffer the additional violence of rape and other sexual abuse in captivity. In 2019, there were 1,052 known cases of Christians being abducted, be it by governments or non-state actors like uh, Boko Haram. Now, let's look at the West. You know, I mean, you think this is happening just in, in, in the Middle, Middle, Middle East and, and in Asia and in Africa. America has started Western Europe are persecuting, persecuting Christians. Let's take a look. How, what form is it taking? This is different. So not just acceptance, but coercion. Christians now being told to embrace gay marriage or else. This report came in by Ken Ham and Mark Lord. In the name of tolerance, a great number of Americans, including many uh, professing Christians, have accepted gay marriage and abortion as we watch the nation move further from its biblical rooted morality. In a recent twist of intolerance, the irony and hypocrisy notwithstanding, many secular activists are not merely content with legalizing unions between same-sex couples, but now want to force Bible-believing Christians to accept such unions and reject their conscience. Threatening punitive consequences, some anti-Christians are demanding that believers not only acknowledge gay marriages as legitimate, but even to embrace and celebrate them. In other words, this um,
Yeah. So in other words, uh, sorry. So in other words, these secularists want their views forced upon everyone else to the exclusion of the U.S. Constitution's guarantee of freedom, religious exercise, life organizations in Washington to one hire someone. So what are the issues coming up? Like, for instance, hire someone who agrees with abortion. Number two, provide mon- mandatory insurance coverage for their employees to get an abortion. Number three, this legislation is a direct attack on the, on the frequency of religion and conscience of pro-life. Two, a nation that was, uh, that was based largely on biblical values has turned accelerating in recent years. Ironically, sympathy for gay marriage and abortion has even effect, uh, has infected the church. One Christian observer has noted that the last six years has been a disaster for evangelicals in this country. Religious freedom has never been under more scrutiny, nor has it ever been more acceptable to personally attack Christians and their livelihoods for their beliefs. There's no longer any institutional refuge for the religious, she added. It is not at all surprising then that significant numbers of Christians have learned to adapt as a result. Nowhere is this more apparent than the same-sex marriage debate. Christians cannot ignore uh, the uh, numbers in polls showing support for gay marriage among young evangelicals. According to Time magazine, young evangelicals' support for gay marriage has gone from 20% in 2003 to 43% in 2014. In fact, answers in Genesis found in a study at, conducted by American Research Group of 20 generations in the church with an error margin of 3.8% that 41% approved of gay marriage and 12% said they didn't know. Many Christians have been changing their views on abortion and homosexual behavior regardless of what the Bible teaches in one wanting either to avoid the label of being intolerant or in some cases desiring to steer clear of governmental persecution. Christians are acquiescing. We believe that most of the giving in is because so many in the church have compromised God's word beginning in Genesis. And so now generations in our churches really don't look to Bible as the absolute authority of the word of God. The nature of Christian persecution is changing in uh, the West. Let's look at Rose. One would not have seen any secular or religious news in the past two years, not to ask the question, is religious persecution closing in? I found this remark interesting. A genuine persecution of Christian does appear to be on the horizon. Anti-Christian sentiment has been growing exponentially in recent years. Losing jobs, losing standing in society, losing tax breaks for Christian businesses, fines for businesses and individuals, even some arrests. All those things are already starting to happen. Christians and conservatives of all stripes are being pushed out of the public square, silenced and openly discriminated against, as described by Prince Tun Professor Robert Judge in his famous 2014 speech. How bad will it get? Bracing for religious persecution in the West. Uh, we know the obvious plans, places for persecution. The situation in Russia does not surprise. New anti evangelism laws in Russia ban discussion of faith outside churches or in government legislated places. Do not also work. A Baptist minister and his wife Ruth uh, fled to America after they were confronted by police and accused of unlawful conducting missionary activity. Their crimes were holding Bible meetings in their home and posting public notices, inviting people to their uh, studies. But that's Russia, you see. Okay, what about Canada? Last year, the city of Toronto caused its thumb when they refused a prominent Christian group permission to hold their annual music festival in a public space. A city official, Natalie Bellman, told the group singing the name of Jesus was tantamount to proselytizing, which she said is against city policy. If you are praising Jesus, praise the Lord, and there's no God like Jehovah. That type of thing, that's proselytizing, she said. The city has serious concern over the song, Days of Elijah, because of the line, there's no God like Jehovah. In America, just a few weeks ago, a liberal magazine advised the Republican Party they must dump Jesus in the coming elections. The advice ignores the 70% of the U.S. population who identify as Christians. However, The advice was said to help the politicians reach agnostics, atheists, and the believe in nothing group said to be 22.8% and growing. 
or uh, the Bible. Attack on the Bible. Ken Ham is a president and CEO of Answers in Genesis. He suggested the Bible may soon be banned in the Western world. He told how prison chaplains were being forced to resign because they quoted Bible verses. This is America. This is not in China. It's an alarming example of how quickly Christians are losing religious freedom across the West. In this case, it wasn't even acceptable for this Christian, this chaplain, to use God's word during a chapel service, a completely voluntary service where those attending will expect to hear from God's word. It won't be long before we see this happening in other countries, including America, Ham said. His focus was accurately prophetic. The American Library last year announced the Bible was among their top 10 banned books of 2015. The Bible was listed as number 6. Just like August, the Red Cross instructed Reserve City Marshals Clay Higgins he could not pray with flood survivors in Louisiana. He planned to pray for a man who just lost his home. Instead, the officer was asked to leave the shelter. At some point during the visit, a volunteer approached Higgins and mentioned there was a problem. He said the Red Cross had an issue with me being there, Higgins said. So I asked him what the problem was. He looked down at my Bible and he gestured and said they have a problem with that. Last March, a Bundy public school principal banned Esther Easter from the Easter parade. The same restrictions were attempted in 2011, but that caused an outrage. This year, the parents have been too scared to comment, according to a report by the Australian. This is in Australia. This is happening in Australia. Charlie Brown. Last year in Kentucky, USA, school district Charlie Brown Christmas had to be performed with no Bible passages and no Jesus. The Kentucky school district ordered all reference to religion in class time and during activities banned. This is America, Kentucky. We know there are many nations close to the gospel. Gideon's International have a list of countries where they are not allowed to operate, like in Afghanistan, Algeria, China, that is a People's Republic, Comoros, uh, Djibouti, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Maldives, Maldives, Mauritania, Morocco, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Tunisia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Yemen. The nations we re regard as democracies are cause for serious concern. We have reason to turn to the Bible and to Jesus for wisdom in the face of these challenges. In the Gospel of John, Jesus warns his disciples the world's alienation for him actually reveals how alienated they are for God and his kingdom. In John chapter 15 verses 1 to 17, he follows by saying that this animosity will turn on believers. There's a kingdom which worships and adores Jesus, and there's a world in ferocious animosity to his divine nature and wisdom. We are instructed that we are not of this world, that's uh, John 17 verse 16, the Bible is clear, the more we are like Jesus and the more we share his name, the greater target we become. In the midst of this climate, stronger Christians must stand with and encourage the new bees. Christian parents in a particular must be role models to their children and guide them through the turbulence of our present times. Years ago, Bob Dylan sang, you gotta serve somebody. Even earlier Joshua said it very accurately but if you refuse to serve the Lord then choose today whom you will serve will you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Ephrates or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live but as for me and my family we will serve the Lord Joshua chapter 28 verse 13 the temptation is to live as a worldly Christian the clear distinction is starting to be revealed and none can ignore it we see from the foregoing that America, Canada, UK, the European nations, Australia is spreading the gay movement around the world. And if you don't fall in line, especially the making overshares into Africa to leadership and through the, uh, the parastatals and through the parliaments and through the Senate and House of Representatives sponsoring bills, uh, there will be sanctions. If you don't uh, fall in, in line, there will be sanctions. A covered form of persecution against those who stand against the gay movement, which is clearly against scripture. The Lord have mercy upon the Western world in Jesus' name and preserve all those who are under the influence of the Western world, strengthen them to stand their ground, despite all that the promoters true uh, promoters uh, throw against them in Jesus' name. Amen. So this 
let's just say a word of prayer again for the persecuted Christians all across the world. So we could see it's not just the killing, it's intimidation. It's not just intimidation, it's being locked up. It's not being locked up. It's a body of Bible. It's not just Bible or Bible. It's any reference to Jesus. And all of that or depriving you of amenities and, and resources and things that might come to you, even in the Western world. And uh, what we see in the realm of the Spirit is that the West is going to be more anti-God than even Asia and uh, Africa and, and many others. And it's going to come to a time where Africans will be sending the gospel into those nations. So Africans, be ready. There is work. So let us pray. Father God Almighty, we just want to pray uh, this moment for the persecuted churches as we round up for the persecuted churches and go over into the organized church structure, which is also an instrument that is being used to persecute covertly or overtly in myriads of ways beyond imagination. Spirit of the living God, we ask, oh God, that you begin a walk in our midst. I pray for those who are being persecuted, strengthen their resolve from the inner man, that they will stand their ground and they will not compromise concerning that which is written. And oh Lord, as you do this, he said, except the seed dies, it abides alone. But when it, it, but it dies, it comes out and bears much fruit. I ask, oh God, that this persecution will intensify the increase in the number of believers across the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Could you speed up your return even up to this moment and these times in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for everything. We give you praise and give you glory. Thank you for answer prayer in Jesus name. So this brings us to the end of today's title, the 28 or 40 prayer and fasting for church, you and I and leadership praying for the persecuted churches in China, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Africa and the Western world, Asia. True stories, why are Christians the most persecuted by all religions of the world? Because their churches focus on Asia, Africa, uh, and the combined Western world led by America. Prayer and fasting for the persecuted churches, day 28 or 40. Action plan, Nigeria, election 2023, two steps and three Northern Compass. I hope and pray that this word will reach you where you need it, but it's not just listening, but it's taking action. And taking action in the place of prayer, in the place of uh, taking specific steps, and taking action to speak out and speak out so that the truth will be heard in Jesus name. Amen. Shalom. This is Ambassador Orojo uh, Monday Ugojo Ogbe. God's Ego Ministries where we are seeding the nations with God's word and God is transforming lives through his timeless truth. One content at a time. We're one in Christ Jesus. Let's say one. Evangelism, discipleship, counseling, healing, deliverance, restoration and prayer without wars, bothers and denominations. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his continent to shine upon you. I pray for those who are part of this pray, uh, prayer and fasting, which is the 28th day today. Less than two weeks to go, or two weeks more to go. I asked uh, about 12 days to go. He yes, asked 12 days to go. Father, I pray that you strengthen them, O oh God. I ask, O oh God, that whatever request they are making, visit them, O oh God, and do exceedingly abundantly above all they can even think or imagine this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I ask that the lines begin to fall for them in pleasant places. I decree and declare that every mountain be, be, be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that every valley be raised up, every crooked path be made straight and every rough places be smoothing out so that they can ride into the plans and purposes of God for their lives and for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord for the persecuted Christian. Thank you for causing them to stand strong to the very end in the mighty name and not denying you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. You are God almighty and there is none like unto you. Thank you Lord in Jesus mighty name we prayed with thanksgiving amen and amen oh god hey this is off it doesn't take it
Hello friends, welcome to God's Eagle Ministries. My name is Ambassador Orojo Mande Ogbe. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word and God himself is transforming lives through his timeless truth, one content, this kind. Go ahead. In other words, this accurately prophetic. The American Library last year announced the Bible was among their top 10 banned books of 20th uh, true against them in Jesus' name. Amen. So, this, let's just say a word of prayer again for the persecuted Christians all across the world. So we could see it's not just the killing, it's intimidation. It's not just intimidation, it's being locked up. It's not being locked up. It's a burden of Bible. It's not just Bible, Bible. It's any reference to Jesus. And all of that, or depriving you of amenities and, and resources and things that might uh, come to you, even in the Western world. And uh, what we see in the realm of the spirit is that the West is going to be more anti-God than even Asia and uh, the Africa and, and many others. And it's going to come to a time where Africans will be sending the gospel into those nations. So Africans, be ready. There is work. So let us pray. Father God Almighty, we just want to pray uh, this moment for the persecuted churches as we round up for the persecuted churches and go over into the organized church structure, which is also an instrument that is being used to persecute covertly or overtly in myriads of ways beyond imagination. Spirit of the living God, we ask, oh God, that you begin a walk in our midst. I pray for those who are being persecuted, strengthen their resolve from the inner man, that they will stand their ground and they will not compromise concerning that which is written. And the Lord has to do this. He said, except the seed dies, it abides alone. But when it, it, it dies, it comes out and bears much fruit. I ask, oh God, that this persecution will intensify the increase in the number of believers across the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, which will speed up your return even unto this moment and these times in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for everything. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for answer prayer in Jesus' name. So this brings us to the end of today's title, the 28 of 40 prayer and fasting for church, you and I, and leadership praying for the persecuted church.
churches in China, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Africa, and the Western world, Asia. True stories, why are Christians the most persecuted by all religions of the world? Because their churches focus on Asia, Africa, uh, and the combined Western world led by America. Prayer and fasting for the persecuted churches, day 28 or 40. Action plan, Nigeria election 2023. Two steps and three not and compass. I hope and pray that this word will reach you where you need it, but it's not just listening, but it's taking action. And taking action in the place of prayer, in the place of uh, taking specific steps, and taking action to speak out and speak out so that the truth will be heard in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. This is Ambassador Orojo Mandi Ugojo Ogbe, God's Ego Ministries, where we are seeding the nations with God's word and God is transforming lives through His timeless truth, one content at a time. We're one in Christ Jesus, let's say one. Evangelism, discipleship, counseling, healing, deliverance, restoration, and prayer with our wars, brothers, and denominations. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause His continent to shine upon you. I pray for those who are part of this pray, uh, prayer and fasting, which is the 28th day today. Less than two weeks to go, or two weeks more to go. I ask uh, about 12 days to go. He has 12 days to go. Father, I pray that you strengthen them, O oh God. I ask, O oh God, that whatever request they are making, visit them, O oh God, and do exceedingly, abundantly, above all they can even think or imagine this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I ask that the lions begin to fall for them in pleasant places. I decree and declare that every mountain be, be, be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that every valley be removed raised up every crooked path be made straight and every rough places be smoothed out so that they can ride into the plans and purposes of God for their lives and for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord for the persecuted Christian thank you for causing them to stand strong to the very end in the mighty name and not denying you in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Lord we give you praise we give you glory you are God almighty and there is none like unto you thank you Lord in Jesus name mighty name we prayed with thanksgiving amen and amen oh. 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 Oh.